Can you do this one as a uh, hip hop inspired freestyle rap? Uh, no. Okay. I could do it as like a Cockney accent. I think like, that's right. Boy, you lots. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it real. Take one, Mark. Hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, developer advocate on the Firebase team, and today I welcome once again Abe Haskins. Yep, I am Abe Haskins. I'm a developer programs engineer on the Firebase team as well. Oh, uh, great. So it's so awesome to have you back. Uh, we've gathered some more burning questions for you to answer. Are you ready to answer some questions? I am ready to extinguish some burning questions. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put that. Here we go. The first question comes from uh, Bones and uh, <laughs> Bones or, or six ones. We're not sure. Bones <laughs> underscore six ones underscore. Do Firebase processes run in web workers? This is a good question. Uh, if you're not familiar, web workers are a background thread in web browsers that you can program. And I'm not actually sure if Mr. Six ones meant do our SDKs run in web workers or if you can use our SDKs in web workers. The answer to the first one is no. As far as I'm aware, none of the Firebase SDKs need that extra processing time, that extra background thread that web workers provide. And web workers are a fairly modern standard, so we don't see it getting used too much in uh, cross-browser SDKs because older browsers don't support them. In terms of can you use uh, Firebase inside of a web worker as a developer, I don't believe so. It's not something we officially push to support. It's possible that it does work, but again, because it's kind of one of those standards that didn't really catch on that much, like it doesn't have that much adoption, we don't see a ton of use in that area. So you can definitely try it, give it a shot and see if it works and file bugs if it doesn't. But uh, it's not something that is a huge priority for us to make work. Now, uh, not coming from a web background myself, is there a difference between a web worker and a service worker? Yeah, so there, that's a great question. And the answer is that one of those is like useful. Um, oh, snap. <laughs> service workers are a... Uh, they're based on web workers, they run in the background, they have some similar traits, uh, and obviously the naming is similar, but service workers are specifically related to caching. They act as a proxy between your page and the requests to the server, so you can influence those, cache things, you know, set up online behavior. Uh, and then the other one is general background tasks. So unlike web workers that I'm not really sure what our situation is, uh, service workers are required for some parts of Firebase. And that's a very important split. Like uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging, for Ex instance. Exactly right. The way we deliver messages to a client for Firebase Cloud Messaging on web is that that service worker is sitting there in the background constantly listening. And when you get a message, the service worker then bubbles up that UI to the browser. So in that case, that part is definitely supported and works. And we can use other parts of Firebase along with Firebase Cloud Messaging, like when you get a message. So if you're thinking service workers instead of web workers, the answer is definitely yes, it does work. Cool, thanks for that clarification. Yeah, of course. I always learn something. Me too. Okay, ready for your next question. Absolutely. This one comes from Calendy on Twitter, and they wanna know, is there any way to test functions locally and serve the web page at the same time? When they attempt this, they get something uh, which will probably show on the screen. Yeah, so if you look at the error he was getting, it's a pretty common one, but it's also not a very good one. It's one of those errors that just kind of shows up when you're programming a lot, which is that the port, port 5000, that Firebase Hosting's local development server runs on, uh, is already reserved in some way. So when he's trying to run our CLI, it gets this really bad error that's like 127.001 port 4000 E, A-D-D-R-U-S-E, which is short for address in use. I'm going to check to make sure that's the exact one, by the way. It's probably close. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, because, so you've seen this a few yeah, times. Yeah, it, it just happens when you're doing web development, web server stuff, and uh, you never know, right? You're like, why is, is this program doing something wrong? Because if that server is accidentally trying to set itself up twice, it could just be crashing. In this case, looking at the error he was getting and not having any other information about his environment, that error probably means that he accidentally turned on the Firebase server in another console as well. And I think what's happening is he tried to run Firebase hosting uh, local server, and he tried to run functions local server, but in one of those invocations, he called it without the only flag. 
Now with our CLI, you can pass dash dash only and say functions to only run the development server for functions, dash dash only hosting to only run hosting. And if he forgot on either of those two calls to Firebase to not say only, one of them is now running two and one is running one and that one is colliding with one of those other Got two. It. So if you just call Firebase serve, even though you had your deployed website, it's now going to serve it locally as well? Yeah, so you can run the serve locally multiple times accidentally, yeah. So it doesn't have to do much with the deployed site. Once you deploy it, it's up there and it's live and that's fine and separate. Mm -hmm. But if you try to run Firebase and aren't careful when you're doing it locally, you can get that collision, which shows up that weird E address in use error because two things are trying to set up the same server and it all falls apart. In this case, a pretty specific bug, but it's worth talking about because that error happens all the time, all over, and it's at least worth understanding what that bug actually means. My favorite error that I've ever uh, heard of is um, one of my colleagues pulled me over to be like, look at this, look at this. It just said, could not. Could not. Could not. <laughs> like that was that was the whole thing, just oh. could not. I, I love when, when the error messages are just like completely useless. Thank you so much for coming on and answering these great questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so glad people keep asking great questions. Every time I come back, it's the questions are better than last time. Yeah, so absolutely keep them coming. Uh, whenever you come across something that you think would be a great fit for the show, make sure you hit it with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And who knows, you may see it on a future episode. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel on YouTube so you can get all the latest shows that are coming out. And who knows, you might be the next person whose Twitter handle we mispronounce on video. It could so. be you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching it, and I'll see you on a future episode. Bye-bye. That's, that's the that's outro. A lot of, ooh, a lot of questions. <laughs>